Straight ahead on 12 News, bringing the farm to the city. How people in Golden Valley are cashing in on fresh produce. Then a twins game where law enforcement became the big star. But first... The city of Robbinsdale has seen a string of car and bike break-ins this summer. The one unique thing they're asking residents to do. 12 News starts right now. We'll have that story a little later, but first, charges are now filed against a Minneapolis man who police say was part of a shooting incident in Brooklyn Park involving two rival gangs. According to the criminal complaint, Otis Johns was driving a vehicle that chased after another down Noble Avenue. Police say both vehicles were going 60 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone. Officers observed shots fired from one of the speeding vehicles at the other. Johns is charged with five counts of second-degree assault with a dangerous weapon. Two juveniles are also charged in the case. As we went to air, charges were pending against a Maple Grove man and another suspect in a CVS pharmacy robbery. It occurred Thursday morning at the CVS on Wedgwood Road in Maple Grove. Police say the suspects stole pharmaceuticals, and police are investigating whether the suspects are connected to a similar robbery in Fridley. Major League Baseball honored their All-Stars at Target Field last week. This week, a completely different set of All-Stars received some well-deserved recognition. Thursday night, the Minnesota Twins honored 37 officers and prosecutors for being the top DWI enforcers in the state. Officer Matt Olson of the Maple Grove Police Department was one of the people honored. He had 76 DWI arrests last year. The Twins also recognized Crystal Officer Tim Tur Tourville, who had 71 DWI arrests. It feels great. It's very important to me. I lost uh, my brother-in-law to a drunk driving accident on July 22nd, 2011, and it really changed my outlook on DWIs and how important it is to enforce the laws. Well, what drives me is uh, knowing that um, families have been impacted with deaths from um, people that have been intoxicated and get in the vehicle and drive. Um, I think it's very, very important to enforce the DWI uh, laws. and. Um, and uh, do all that we can do to save lives. Last year in Minnesota, more than 25,000 people were arrested for driving while intoxicated. Osseo isn't giving up on efforts to save the city's nearly 100-year-old water tower. The tower hasn't actually held water for years, but some would like to preserve it. Doing so would cost about $300,000 for repairs and painting. On Monday, the City Council will decide whether to hire a consultant to see if the tower is eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. The distinction could help Osseo get grant money to cover the cost of repairs. The 4th of July isn't the only Independence Day celebration this month. All weekend in Brooklyn Center, residents of Liberian descent will celebrate their Independence Day with a series of soccer and kickball games. Crews were busy at Brooklyn Center High School getting ready for the events. Games will begin at 3.30 Saturday afternoon and go through 9.30 in the evening. Musical performances and traditional Liberian cuisine will also be on hand for visitors. Regular admission is $10 and organizers say people of all cultures and nationalities are invited. Robbinsdale police are asking residents to be extra vigilant after a string of car and bicycle thefts. And during the past week there were at least eight theft reports. Many of them happened in the southern part of the city. Reporter Sonia Goins talked with a young boy who was recently a victim. Usually I'm pretty handy with this stuff. Summer didn't get off to a good start for 10-year-old Kenton Everhart. It feels disappointing that somebody would actually steal your bike. His bike was on the side of the house when some teens ripped it off. I didn't have my bike locked up then. She just had it there for a second. It's wrong for people to steal bikes. His mom and aunt actually chased after the teens Finally. who took his bike. They were so scared, they ran straight to their house and um, dropped the bike and my mom got out of the car and got it back. Kenton isn't the only one who's had his property taken. This police report shows calls that were made last Thursday and Friday because of car break-ins and bike thefts. So there's been a rash of uh, car break-ins and uh, some just bike uh, thefts in from yards and things. Almost all of them, it sounds like, are, are caused by teenagers. Now, because of all the recent break-ins, police are really enforcing the teen curfew policy. Now, what that means is that at 9 o'clock, when you hear the siren, 
and you're under 12, you better be in the house. So you should know where your 12 year, 12 year old is at nine o'clock. And then it gradually uh, goes up as the ages go up. Police are increasing bike patrols. They will also keep an eye on suspected hot spots. But officials are also asking residents to protect their property. It's incredibly important for people to not keep valuables in their vehicles, lock their cars at night, put their bikes away. Kenton says he's learned a valuable lesson and he's no longer taking any chances with his ride. So now I lock my bike up and um, so nobody can steal it anymore. In Robbinsdale, Sonia Goins, 12 News. Police arrested two people early this morning. Officials say the men had burglary tools on them. One of the suspects also admitted he was looking for unlocked vehicles. Robbinsdale city officials want residents to call 911 if they see anything suspicious. Up next, how you can take ownership in a farm. It is an increasingly popular way to get fresh produce. Then later in sports, highlights from the championship game of a big wheelchair hockey tournament. But first, warm sun on, su on Saturday. Cooler weather then is in store for Sunday. A decades-old tradition is underway in Osseo this weekend. The annual Big Top Tent Produce Sale at Dean Supermarket along Central Avenue is a three-day event featuring fresh produce, fruits, and veggies at prices as much as 25% off. The tent sale runs through Saturday. In Maple Grove, they're going for a record when it comes to produce. And more than 10,000 watermelons weighing 157,000 pounds are stacked outside Cub Foods in Maple Grove. Cub Foods and Robinson Fresh of Eden Prairie are teaming up in an attempt to break a Guinness World Record for the largest fruit display. Proceeds from the watermelon sale will benefit breast cancer research. Another thing that's really important about the program is that, and not a lot of people know this, but uh, watermelons is very high in lycopene, so compared to tomato, actually, there's four times the amount of lycopene in a watermelon than there is per serving of a tomato, so it's very good for you. It's a natural cancer preventer. The Maple Grove store is holding a watermelon eating contest on Saturday, and a mobile mammography unit will also be on site. There is no better time to stock up on fresh produce than the summer growing season. And there's a growing number of options out there to find fresh, locally grown produce. And reporter Shannon Slatton shows us how one option brings food fresh from the farm. So I'm just divvying up into one pound bags. Farmer Jack Frechette. Every week there is something new. Knows this is as fresh. Yes, it is as it gets. It's pretty much as fresh as can be. This summer at Sandberg Learning Center in Golden Valley, you'll find a way. Now I'm ready to go. Not only to pick up fresh produce. Fantastic, I'm Jack. But to be a part. Very nice to meet you as well. I'll be taking yes. over for Stephanie sure. going forward. So. Of the farm itself. We have a little bit of everything. 22 miles away, the path to Muddy Feet Farm is just as interesting as what happens there. It's really cool. Go beyond the mini golf course where you can stop to play around or even pet a goat. And that's always an exciting one. Then beyond large pieces of art in the sculpture garden. So here it is. This is Muddy Feet Farm. Two years ago, farmer Stephanie Stillman sculpted this land. And there's Jack. Into a farm. Carrots are doing really well. There's cucumbers. Sweet potatoes. Stephanie is an unlikely farmer who grew up in Plymouth, went to the University of Minnesota and fell in love with sustainable agriculture. Oh, this is something I'm really passionate about. You know, food is what sustains us. It's really an important thing. And what Stephanie and her team grows is given to our customer shareholders as part of a co-op style model called CSA, or Community Supported Agriculture. The Muddy Feet model is a fantastic one because it has smaller shares, um, which makes it more possible for people with lower income to still have access. For $10 per share per week, people get whatever's ripe on the farm. There are hands who are planting and we do everything by hand and it's with love and it's with care and you know, we're really nourishing the land out here. We're nourishing people through that. 18, 19 pounds. You still get, I don't know, a pound or more today. I'll be meeting all these people for the first time. Fresh green beans are really a big hit with our kids. Heads of broccoli. Each week, shareholders don't know what surprise they'll get to take home. I'm trying different things than I would have before. Really kind of trying to add some different vegetables, I guess, to our diet and think in without me having to go and choose my own. It's somebody forces me to, to cook turnips, for example. <laughs> Quite crisp. 
quite fresh. But there's no surprise in where their vegetables grow. I know before I walk in, before I see anybody's reaction, I know that I'm delivering them uh, a fantastic product. In Golden Valley, Shannon Slatten, 12 News. And for more information about buying into the CSA, you can check our website. We'll have some more info about that at 12.tv. Coming up, a popular Disney production comes alive in Plymouth. And up next, though, in sports, local American Legion baseball teams have clutch hitting in tournament play. John Jacob steps in next. I think this would be a very difficult sport. Wheelchair hockey, you have to have a lot of upper body strength, you gotta, don't you? You've got to be able to maneuver yourself and be able to, to move yeah. the ball down, down the floor. Yeah, it was an entertaining Thursday night. 18 years ago, the United States Electric Wheelchair Hockey Association was formed. Out of that came the start of the sport of power hockey for those individuals who use a motorized chair in everyday life. And the Power Hockey Cup brings together North America's best teams every two years. The Minnesota Saints play the Philadelphia Power Play in the 2014 Cup Final Thursday night. And Philadelphia in black, Liam Miller bringing the ball up the left side and scores. And he gives the Power Play a 1-0 lead. The Saints tie it here. Chad Wilson alone out front, shoots and scores. And the start of a big night for him. Later in the first period, Wilson maneuvers down the right side. Lost a high shot into the top left corner of the net. His goal gives the Saints a 2-1 to one lead after one. Second period, and Wilson gets ahead of the Philly defense, keeps control of the ball before going in to score. This one makes it 4-1. to one. The Saints later lead 5-1, but the power play rallies. Nice effort here by Jake Saxton as he scores to make it 5-3. to three. Philadelphia gets one more in the third period to pull within a goal. The Saints hang on for a 5-4 to four victory winning their third straight Power Cup championship. First round wins from April Grove and Osseo in the Substate 11 American Legion Baseball Tournament pit the two rivals against each other in the semifinals this morning. Top of the sixth inning, still scoreless in this game until Justin Philippon's ground out brings Ben Christofferson home from third, an RBI for Philippon, and starts a big inning. Rudy Alexander strokes a two-out base hit. Andrew Cronin motors home, sliding in for a two to nothing lead. Then Haven Williams drops a hit into the left field corner and that scores Andrew Lyons and Alexander and it's four to nothing Osseo. The Orioles get solid pitching and defense all game. Alexander with a nice diving catch here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Bottom of the ninth, Maple Grove with a runner on first. Relief pitcher Andrew Midthune snags the comebacker, throws the first for the game ending double play. Osseo wins 4-0 as Justin Clark gets the win. Osseo plays again Saturday morning at 10. Maple Grove is still alive in the tournament. Clutch two out hits are the theme in a substate four game between Hopkins and Wyzetta. Top of the second, John Cook's base hit with two away, scores Mac Wiesner for a 1-0 Hopkins lead, bottom of two. Thomas Nettleton answers for Wyzetta with a two-art RBI single, tying the game at one. Top of the third, Robbie Palkert slices a hit to right to score Logan Ottman and give the Flyers a two-to-one lead. Bottom of the fourth, Hopkins errors open the door for Wyzetta. Christian Linhard's hit scores Tyler Brackey for a 3-2 lead. Linhard would later score on a throwing error. Sixth inning, Kyle Haskamp drops in a two-out hit. Clayton Bodine scores, and it's 5-2 Wyzetta. The next batter is Mickey Leas, and the first pitch he sees is crushed over the center field fence for a two-run homer and a 7-2 Wyzetta lead. They win 7-3 and face top-seeded Excelsior tonight. Champlin has won two straight games to start the Substate 9 tournament. Summer weekends are usually busy ones on Minnesota lakes. In this week's Channel 12 fishing tip, Terry Tuma explains the best way to fish on a crowded lake. How can we increase our success on weekends when we have a lot of fishing and boating pressure? Well, first of all, is get out there early, meaning unloading your boat prior to daybreak, just when the sun starts to come up, we should be on the water actually fishing. That's number one. So it's the early bird gets the worm, so to speak. Another is, is camp out. I call it camping out, is don't be, you know, Pick a very productive spot and fish it 
thoroughly. If you have to go to an area where these boats are fishing, if they're anchored or trolling or whatever it is, at least stay to the outside edges because those fish are going to either shut down or they're going to spook. And if then take a look at secondary structure. Sometimes we forget about that. We always are fishing main structure, main structure, main lake structure. Take a look at secondary structures. It'll be smaller structure. Nobody's going to be fishing there. And many times those fish will be pushed into that air or they're going to be biting. They're going to be active fish. And then another is always slow, subtle, and small baits and lures. That's another big factor under these kind of conditions. And then do practice patience. Another ingredient in catching those fish on those weekends. And if we really put this all together, we can have some great success. Do not be in a hurry, and you are going to catch fish guaranteed. Just take a kid fishing this week. Thanks, Terry. And Terry's <laughs> back to his regular uh, Thursday time slot next week. All right. Thanks a lot, John. Mm -hmm. When we come back, a magical lamp and a theatrical production sure to have you singing along. Young actors taking to the stage this weekend for Aladdin. We'll be right back. You could say a group of local kids spent the past two weeks <laughs> acting up. They attended theater camp at Blue Water Theater Company in Wyzetta. And this weekend, they're showing off what they learned in a production of Disney's Aladdin. And Carissa Wyant has their story in our weekend showcase. <laughs> Sing, dance, act, and have a ton of fun when you come here. 11-year-old Caroline Hess of Plymouth and her aspiring actor friends have been hard at work putting on an act. The kids come every day from 10 to 2, and we spend time teaching them how to sing the songs. We teach them how to do the dancing, and we teach them the general basics of acting. They're rehearsing for an upcoming performance of Aladdin. We try to give them the best experience that we can with how theater goes. You know, even at a young age, they can still do a lot as elementary students. In case you don't recall, Aladdin is a poor young man who wanders the streets in the magical city of Agrabah. He finds this magical lamp and then he turns into a prince and then he wants to marry this princess, but then um, Jafar, uh, one of the evil characters, um, tries to destroy him. These talented kids dance and sing their way through the story while gaining valuable skills that extend beyond the stage. They get a lot of confidence. They come in with a lot of um, excitement and a lot of ideas and a lot of um, fun ways to express themselves. The kids poured their hearts into this production. Everybody really worked hard. And they're ready to perform the big show. It's just a really great community event for people to come out even if they don't know students on stage. It's just a fun, fun show. In Wyzetta, Carissa Wyatt, 12 News. And you can see the production Saturday at 2 at Wyzetta Central Middle School. Have a great weekend, everyone.